Stories are what make us human. They define our identity, they define our culture, and they define our understanding of the world. In this way, stories serve different purposes and are important to us for different reasons. The story of Christ's sacrifice is powerful within the Catholic community for many reasons. Each year, we celebrate the Stations of the Cross to remember and give thanks for the sacrifice that Christ made for us. However, the Stations themselves are actually part of a much bigger narrative, known as Christ's Passion. Passion being a Latin word for suffering. This enduring narrative takes place in six episodes. Each episode has a distinct theme. These themes were chosen by the students who developed this project and have been central to the collaboration that has taken place between the music ministry, art ministry, and youth ministry classes here at St. Peter's College, Cranbourne Campus. I present for you now the story of Christ's Passion. This scene portrays Jesus' unconditional and selfless love for his disciples, even when they disobey him. From the Last Supper, we can learn that Jesus will always love us like he did with the disciples. Jesus demonstrates this as even though he knew Judas would betray him, he still welcomed and showed him unconditional love. We can replicate this in our own lives by treating our peers with kindness and respect, though they may differ from us or have separate beliefs. On the first day of Passover, Jesus met with his disciples to eat dinner together. He knew that he would soon be persecuted by the Jewish officials and met with his disciples knowing it would be their last meal as a group. As they talked, Jesus said, I tell you now, the one of you here will betray me. Surely not me, Lord. Not I. Not I. Not I. Not I. Not I. While they were eating, Jesus broke bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat from it. For this is my body, which I will give out for you and for many. Then Jesus took the cup and giving thanks gave it to his disciples saying Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. The bread and wine is a vital part of the Last Supper story as Jesus knew that there would be people in the years to come that didn't care about him or his message but he still gave the gift of himself through his blood. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, of Gethsemane was an event in the life of Jesus in the New Testament between the conclusion of the Last Supper and Jesus' arrest. Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane and he said to them, Sit there and wait while I go over there and pray. Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground. My father, may, you take this may someone take this cup away from me. Make it your will and not mine. Then angel appeared and walked over to him and strengthened him. Jesus had prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. He then asked Peter, Could you not wait here for one hour? And he said to them, this, The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. He went away a second time and prayed. Father, 
When he came back, he again found them sleeping, because their eyes were heavy, and said to them, Get up, all of you. Judas Iscariot was one of Christ's twelve apostles. Jesus trusted him as a friend. They walked together, shared meals together, and Jesus allowed him to be part of his inner circle. The following episode depicts Judas's betrayal of Jesus. Following Jesus' prediction at the supper, Judas had guided Roman soldiers and officials from the chief priests and Pharisees to a garden. He did this by identifying him with a kiss, commonly known as the kiss of Judas. Simon, who had a sword, took it out and cut off the ear of the high priest's servant. Jesus commanded the actions of Simon and told him to put the sword away and heal the servant. Jesus was then arrested by the officials and bound. Greed is the intense and selfish desire for something, especially wealth or power. Following his arrest, Jesus is brought to trial before the Jewish officials. The theme of greed is significant to this scene due to the way that the higher Jews acted, as they were selfish for power and didn't want Jesus to overthrow them. Are you Jesus? I you say you are. Are you a king? It is you who says it. As that would mean that they would lose any power they possess over the Jewish community. They then tried Jesus and prosecuted him for claiming his title as the King of the Jews. Are you Messiah? It is you who says it. Are you the Son of God? It is you who says it. They say you're a king of a kingdom. Is this true? My kingdom is not of this world. All those who listen will be saved and live eternally in my kingdom. Blasphemy! That's blasphemy! God! God! Take him away! Following the trial by the Jewish officials, Jesus is brought before Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor. Are you the king of the Jews? It is you who has said it. Anyone that, hear, anyone that is of the truth shall hear my voice. What is truth? Pilate leaves the decision in the hands of the crowd. I have examined this man and find no fault with this man touching the things wherever you accused him. What shall I do? Crucify him! Fine. I am innocent of the blood of this just person and wash my hands clean of him. This episode decides a failure of justice in favour of popular appeal. took Jesus and tied him to a post. He was then whipped and beaten upon 
the post until his skin was broken and bleeding. A crown created out of thorns with the intention to cause pain, humiliation and ridicule is now placed upon the head of Jesus. The crown of thorns is known as the badge of sin and the price to pay for disobeying the internal living God. Jesus was sinless. He wore the crown of thorns. Mercifully, he took away our badge of sin. Finally, Jesus is burdened with the cross, which he carries to Golgotha. A sign is attached to the cross, reading Jesus, the Nazarene, King of Jews. The Roman guards nail Jesus to his cross by his hands and his feet. He is lifted up for the crowd to see. At last, the Roman guard, Longangitis, takes his spear and thrusts it into Jesus' side, bringing forth blood and water. This moment is when Longangitis believes that Jesus was in fact the Son of God. Jesus died a mortal death upon the cross for us, sacrificing himself to wash away our sins.